Welcome back to the lesson of solving nonlinear equations using the bracketing methods. Uh, in the pre previous video, we introduced the bisection method. Uh, we uh, int introduced it graphically and using some mathematical formulas. In this video, we will introduce the bisection method as an algorithm, step-by-step -step solution of the problem. Uh, the first step in the bisection algorithm would be uh, finding or selecting the initial values of x1 and x2 and the tolerance. The tolerance is the uh, value of epsilon, the small value uh, uh, that will create our termination criteria. Remember that find, uh, selecting x1 and x2 is usually uh, a process that depends on your knowledge of the problem. So if we are really solving an engineering or a physical problem, then we have some idea about where x, uh, where the root may be lying. x1 and x2 in this case will present the uh, uh, boundaries of the interval in which the solution is lying. Then uh, we initiate a counter. Uh, this counter is quite important in any iterative algorithm. Uh, it counts how many times the algorithm has been used or have been run in order to terminate also the uh, um, algorithm or the running uh, in case uh, the uh, solution is not found. So you set an upper bound for the counter that really uh, stops the uh, program from running. Finally, we calculate uh, f of x1 and f of x2 to find their, um, uh, their uh, signs uh, uh, so that we can uh, proceed from that uh, point. Now comes the core of the uh, algorithm. The previous slide presented the initiation step. The first step in the algorithm itself would be incrementing the counter. So we started with a 0, now it's a 1, then 2, and so on. Now we have the heart or the main line of the bisection algorithm, which says that x3 is equal to the average of x1 and x2. Following that, we check. If f of x3 is equal to 0, then we have arrived at a solution. Of course, uh, this, f at least uh, through my experience, I haven't seen this happening before, except in uh, very simple problems that r uh, really are not of any practical value. Uh, but we always add this line for termination in case you are extremely lucky and you got uh, the solution of uh, the function. Uh, following that, we check also for the counter. Are we, uh, have we run too many times? In that case, then we should stop running uh, anymore. Uh, the last step uh, to check for termination is the relative error. If the relative error is less than the tolerance available, then we should be stopping. This is where uh, most uh, of the action happens. This is where we usually uh, stop if uh, we find uh, a close enough solution for our problem. Now comes the following step. If we didn't terminate, then we uh, determine where would the new x3 go. Whether should it be put instead of uh, x2 or instead of x1 and that's determined by checking the sign of f of x3 relative to the others. So if f of x3 times f of x1 is less than 0, meaning they have ne uh, different signs, then x3 goes to uh, x2, otherwise x3 goes to x1. Now the bisection algorithm is uh, complete, comes the step uh, uh, the final step, which is go to the increment counter step. The increment counter step uh, is the first step of the algorithm. If you may uh, remember here, uh, here you are. This is the first step of the algorithm, increment the counter. So we now we go to this point where we uh, uh, st uh, continue working on the algorithm. 
So uh, this actually presents uh, the uh, bisection algorithm. As you can see, it's not a complicated one. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, let's just now uh, apply this for an example, uh, an example that we will solve together uh, in the in the next video. Following that, we will check the uh, program written in Octave to see how we can write a program to uh, find the roots of nonlinear equations using the bisection method. So see you next video.